Uh, Professor Turley, uh, in your uh, statement, you quoted Justice Brandeis's famous formulation of privacy as the right to be let, al let alone, which uh, I do believe is indeed uh, one of the rights most valued uh, by Americans, and that uh, most Americans uh, would be horrified uh, to hear uh, of the government having access uh, to their private communications. There's something uh, really fundamental about this separation between the public and the private, the idea that each of us has a sphere of personal privacy that is inviolable, uh, inviolable that goes to the heart of what it means to live in a free society. But you know, sometimes you hear a contrary view that, well, if you're not doing anything wrong, what do you care uh, if the government has, uh, has access to this? Uh, what, what would be your response to, to that? Well, thank you very much for that question. Uh, what's interesting about the quote that you just cited is that this was part of the Katz Olmsted line of cases. And Katz said that the Fourth Amendment is there to protect persons, not places. It got rid of the trespass doctrine as the key test for whether your rights are violated. We've sort of returned to that because the location of a lot of this data, if it's abroad, for example, or it's routed through an international source, suddenly loses its protections as a citizen. So to answer your question, how does that impact you? The answer is that 702 and the abuses under that section impact free speech, associational rights, um, a host of other constitutional rights because it creates a chilling effect that if citizens know that their communications are part of a massive data bank that the government can search and piece together who you've talked to, who you send to, you begin to live in this fishbowl society. That impacts us as citizens. It impacts how we exercise rights, which is what Brandeis was referring to. And uh, Mr. Uh, Scherer, uh, or Mr. Sh uh, Scherer, Scherer, I should say, right? Scherer, yeah, Scherer. like um, a singer. We've uh, been talking a little bit about how this right was uh, you know, put into our Constitution by our founders in the form of the Fourth Amendment, and how a lot of the jurisprudence and our understanding of the Fourth Amendment uh, is rooted in this idea of a reasonable expectation of privacy. And so we've heard that the uh, law, at least as far as the courts are concerned, is a little bit unsettled when it comes to how that applies to the situation we're talking about uh, today. So uh, in your view, uh, is that a lens that Congress should look through uh, when deciding what to do about FISA, uh, the reasonable expectation of privacy that Americans have, and how should that apply to, uh, to the gathering of information under Section 702? Well, two points. Uh, first of all, I, while Congress should take account of what the courts have said on the, the application of the Fourth Amendment in this setting, I don't believe, with, with all respect, that, that you as members of Congress should feel bound by what the courts say. All of you, uh, and I apologize if this comes across as a lecture, but all of you have taken an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States, not the interpretation of the Constitution by some federal district judge in the Western District of Wisconsin or wherever he or she may be. Um, and, and you have the ability, and I think the right and the duty under the Constitution to, to reach your own conclusions about what the Fourth Amendment requires. But secondly, even um, uh, co Congress has an important role to play in determining for the courts what is a reasonable expectation of privacy, and, and when do the people of the United States have a reasonable expectation of privacy, and even if, even if some courts don't think that we have a reasonable expectation of privacy in our electronic data, which, as we've heard, may get sold to data brokers and then sold to other people, uh, Congress can step in and say, no, we think the people of the United States do, in fact, retain a reasonable expectation of privacy, uh, in, their, in their private data, even if it's held by Google or Amazon or somebody else. And, and we, the Congress of the United States, believe that uh, Americans retain uh, an expectation of privacy in communications that have been collected pursuant to 702. Well, that's right. And so what, could we take the analysis a step further? And so I think most Americans would understand we live in a dangerous world. Intelligence gathering is sure. very important. Sometimes aggressive tactics are needed. And it's possible that on occasion, uh, you know, uh, information uh, can be incidentally collected. So the question becomes, once that information is there and in the government's hands, what do you think is the reasonable expectation uh, of Americans as to what is done with that information, how long it's kept, who can access it? Because that's really, I think, the question when it comes to reforming FISA that we need to consider. Well, certainly, and if, and if people have not expressly consented to have that, that data collected and put into the 702 database or wherever else it goes, uh, I think it's fair to say that they should retain an expectation of privacy 
in, in that data, even if somebody else has it. And therefore, Congress can say, consistent with the Fourth Amendment to the FBI, if you're going to search that database of purchase data or if you're, you're going to search the database of 702-derived uh, information, uh, you need to get a probable cause order from a court. Thank you very much. It's great to see the bipartisan agreement on a lot of these principles, and I yield back to the chair. Thank you, uh, Chair.